In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to give you some tips on working with your webcam audio and video in the new interface. They've changed some things and made some enhancements on how you can control your webcam. We'd like to look at those in the course of this video. I have on track number two here a video showing a tablet and they've done green screen for the tablet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our content and put it as though it were on the tablet when we're all done. But now I need to get my content from my webcam. How do I do that? I must be in the media room and when I'm there, I have this second button from the left called record. Let me click on that. That will give us three options. One of them is record from webcam. We'll click on that one. And when we do, if our webcam is properly attached and recognizes it, you'll see a screen like this. There are several things that we can change right off the bat. First of all, I will often change my folder where I'm storing this. So I can click here and navigate and pick my folder. I've done that already. It's that simple. The second thing is we have these two buttons. One is profile, one is settings. I like to view it this way. You have to look at both of them. And I'm going to change my settings first, which is more the control of the camera itself and the microphone. And the other is the output, how it will output it into my project. You notice the default here is 640 by 480, something most people don't use anymore. But we're going to show you how to change that. But to do that, I'm going to change it both in settings and in profile. So let's start with the hardware controls, as it were, and look at settings. I'm going to click on that. And here are my camera settings. If I had more than one active camera device attached, this would not be grayed out. I could pick between them. And here we have our device resolutions. We'll get back to that. I also have audio controls. Now, in this case, it's not grayed out because I have several potential audio inputs and I can select between them. I'm going to leave it at my webcam. And then we have this advanced settings. Let's click on that and see where that takes us. Now in the advanced settings, I have some video processing and some camera control, two screens to pick from. And the features I can control will depend on the limitations of my webcam. For example, here I have no control over hue. I have no control over gamma. I have no control over color enable. So these things are not things I can control from software. But the things I can have either a slider or a checkbox. Let's take saturation just for example. Watch what happens when I dial it back. Now I'm pre-processing it to film basically in black and white. To go back to the normal, you cl click on the default button. Now I also can change the brightness. I can darken it or lighten it any way I want. I'll go back to default. I can also change the backlight compensation here, a value of zero or one. Let's do that in this case. So these are some of the kinds of things you can change. Now in some cases you can turn on an auto checkbox and other times you can't. So like here, brightness and contrast, I can't do any auto but I can on white balance. Let's go to the other tab, which is my camera control. Now, when I click on camera control in pre-processing, I can actually zoom. There, I'm zooming in on the window. This is pointed basically to the corner of this room. And so I can do this in pre-processing. I can also on my device pan or tilt or turn things back to normal. I'll leave them back to default in this case and then I'll click on apply. So these are nice controls that you can use when it comes to working with your camera itself using the settings button. I'll click on OK. I forgot I didn't set it to a higher resolution. Let me show you a couple of things you can do. We're going to take the resolution and mine on my device will go as high as 2304 to 1536. But my output is only going to be 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to keep it right at that right now. So this controls the way it's going to take it from the camera. It doesn't control your output. So I'll click on OK. 
And right now, even though I set it that way and it's going to change the screen on me, my output will still be 640 by 480. Now I need to go to my profile controls. Let's click on there. And here is our profile. You have three options. You have MPEG-2, which gives you four sub options. And then you also have AVI. And AVI has three sub options. And the one most of us will use is going to be our H.264, which gives you a lot more options. Now, I'm 1920 by 1080. I can record in 24, 30, 60, or 120 frames per second. Let's do the 60. And that's the option that I have. If I want to save this as a custom option, I'm going to click on New. And I can take Custom Profile. I'll call this My Profile. And click on OK. And now I have a custom profile I can click on without going through all the options. I'll click on OK. So it just says My Profile, but the negative here is it doesn't tell me the resolution. So if I don't remember what it was, I have to go back to my own profile. The next thing you want to do once you have your settings done and you know where you want to store it is record. Now you have two shortcuts for recording. You can simply click on the red record button and it will automatically record. But you can also say I'm going to pick a time limit. So I click on here. The minimum is five seconds. I'm going to set it to say 15 and you can also set a size now what if you set both of them now the minimum size is one megabyte if I set both of them it will stop at whichever it hits first the the lowest size or the lowest time uh, most of us won't set both of them at the same time so you can pick one or the other or neither we'll just set it to 15 seconds and this tells you here the amount recorded, amount of free, free space on your record destination, the amount that's been used. And this gives you the possible length that you can record using these particular settings that you already have. Again, if I had a smaller profile, a 640 by 480, this number would be much higher since it would use less space per second. Let's record. I'm going to click on the red button and I will see my recorded size creep up and I will see my video length creep up all the way to 15 seconds. This boring shot <laughs> of the corner of my room and we're just about done and boom, now we're done. I've recorded it. It's captured the audio. It wants a name for it and you can turn this prompt off by clicking the this here. I'll just say junk. Number three, and I've recorded it. Here it is. If I want to preview it, I double click on it. It will give me a floating window. And here's my window. I can resize it. And you can, you can hear the audio if you want. And I can make it full screen so I can see this without moving off of the screen. I don't have to go back to PowerDirector in order to do that. So let's say I, am, I assume I'm okay with this and it's going to store it and it's going to get ready to record something else if I want to. I can record as many sequentially as I want in this and they will all go to my media room. But I'm going to close the window out. It will take me back to PowerDirector. And so what I want to do is take my video on track number two. I'm going to click on that, do edit. Let's do a little bit of chroma key on this one. Uh, we'll click here and we'll click here. And we'll do add another key. Click our eyedropper and click here. And there's some more touch up I could do that's not germane to this particular tutorial. I'll just save that for now as OK. And then what I want to do is take my new video and drag it down to track number one. And as we play it, we're going to see that there it's recording this video, which has no motion to it, unfortunately. But uh, I, I basically put one piece of content in the other. So that's a little bit about some of the tips I would give you in using the new features available when you're doing webcam recording 
in CyberLink PowerDirector.